Okay, we're going to get started. Please find a seat so we can get started. Check outside, bring them in. Anybody outside? Slam. Okay, we ask the sisters, cover your heads. Brothers, uncover your heads. We're going to face Jerusalem and open up. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Praise the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading will be coming from Proverbs 18, verses 16 through 21. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. The lot causes contentions to cease and parted between the mighty. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, then their contentions are like the bars of a castle. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that live, they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I have just read Proverbs 18, verses 16 through 21. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, now we're going to have a selection from the choir.
Okay, let's get a choir another hand, y'all, for a beautiful selection. Praise to the Most High God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Peace to everyone who's here today in the name of Jesus. Peace to everyone that's watching us on YouTube. And it's always good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. And before we get into the lesson, um, we're going to read just a few scriptures. Let's turn over to uh, 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. 12 and 1. Okay, read. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. 1 Corinthians 12. Oh. I'm sorry, verse 12. Verse 12, read that. 12 and 12. My fault. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So the body is one and has many members. So however many Israelite classes we open up, everybody is of one body and we all under the banner of Christ. And everybody that's, that has all the members that are in this one body, each of them have a specific job to edify and exhort and um, expand the word of God. Skip down to verse 29 and read, I mean, 20, um, 27. Start at 27. Go ahead. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members are in, members in particular. So we the body of Christ. Wherever class we have set up, we all the body of Christ and members in particular. Verse 28. Go ahead. And God has set some in the church. So God has set some in the church. So everybody has a particular responsibility. Go ahead. First apostles. Some are apostles, go ahead. Secondarily prophets. Some prophets, go ahead. Thirdly teachers. And thirdly teachers. So we have, every time we set up a camp, you know, we start off in the beginning where we, you know, meet at a hotel or something until we establish a building to where we can all meet. And then once we do get that property that we meet at, everybody has a responsibility in a, to maintain and upkeep the property. But first and foremost, you have to have somebody who's going to be there to teach the people in the absence of somebody that's flying in from Indiana or from L.A. or whatever. So thirdly, teachers, go ahead. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Everybody's not an apostle. Go ahead. Are all prophets? Everybody's not a prophet. Go ahead. Are all teachers? And everybody's not a teacher. Go ahead. Are all workers of miracles. And everybody don't work a miracle. But everybody have their own particular job within the body to keep it going and edify it. Go ahead. Have all the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues. Do all interpret. But covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. But, but covet earnestly the best gifts. So the gift that the Lord has given you within the body to edify it and keep it going Cover that earnestly and do the best that you can. In other words, give 100%. So that being said, we had a brother a couple of weeks ago when we set up the class in Vegas. We finally got some property. And as we get property, brothers have to step up. So we had uh, brother Travis here a couple of weeks ago from Vegas where he came out and taught. And we also have a brother that teaches out there in Vegas as well, which is brother Rashad. And he's going to come up here and he's going to give the lesson. So we got, like I said, we can travel out there, and they can travel out here. So, so this brother Rashad, he's going to be giving a lesson. How you guys doing? Right. Good, good. All right. Uh, praise the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And peace be unto you in the name of Jesus. Uh, Peace to everyone that's watching on YouTube Live as well. And it truly is a blessing to stand before you today on the Lord's Sabbath day. And I say that because, um, you know, I've been in the Word for like eight or nine years. And I started off with 
brother Marlon. That's what I started off with. And he pointed me to Elijah. And then uh, you know, I've been talking to Elijah every now and then. And he prompted me to go get baptized. So I got baptized out here in this city. Uh, but I say it feels like yesterday, to be honest. But, you know, it was like three years ago, four years ago. And now I'm standing in front bringing the lesson. And it's a, it's a weird feeling. It's, it is a real feeling. But um, during this walk, it's been a tough walk. You know, and it got really hard once I got baptized, to be honest. Um, like my man Font always say, it don't start until you get baptized. So ever since I got baptized, it's been pretty difficult to keep this walk up. My career has started taking off. And the difficulty in it is not necessarily the world. It's not the world, because we all in this world, we all have the same fight in this world. But it's more or less it's the relationship in the church, for me specifically, that has me sometimes um, striving and fighting uh, the wiles of the devil. You know, it, and it starts from um, tailbearing and murmurings and whisperings and everybody backbiting and talking about somebody behind their back. See, growing up, me specifically, right, um, I don't usually tell my story too much, but I, you know, my dad wasn't around, of course. My mom, she there, but me and her don't really see eye to eye that much. And uh, I always became success. I became who I am because I built family around me. So once I got into this truth, no matter what camp you're from, you became my family, right? But then once the trials and tribulations started, I have not had so, so many people in my family now talk just as bad as, to me about me as they did with my physical family. And that's a problem for me specifically, you know, because we in this truth, we should know better than doing that. So which brought me to the lesson, tell bearer, take heed to that self. Tell bearer, take heed to thyself. Because there's a way, if somebody's sinning and somebody messed up, is a way you should go about it, right? You should not go about talking about somebody back. Hey, man, da, 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 da. come on, bro. We all should be in one accord. The Bible said a just man falls seven times, right? But the wicked will fall into the sheep. So we all going to fall. We all going to have that time. But it's a way we, we should conduct ourselves in doing it. And we all should be looking to help each other up. So we're going to start off in Leviticus 19 and verse 1. We're going to start off from here. And I want to start off from here because I don't believe we as a whole, I'm not talking about, you know, ICOJ or anybody specifically, but I don't think we as a whole harp on our mouth. We always talk about the Sabbath. We always talk about um, idol worship. But do we really take heed to what we say in the morning? And that's what we need to focus on. And I, it's me too. Trust me, it's me too. Just like Fun always say, this pulpit or whatever this is, don't, it's not a force field. I go through it just as much as everybody else, if not more. But Leviticus 19 and verse 1. Go ahead. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying... Okay, so I have to stop off here. This is the Lord talking. I have to say that because that brings weight on something. The Lord is talking to Moses, and what did he say? Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy... For I, the Lord, your God, am holy. So he said in the bar, he's saying, you should be holy because I am holy. So everything he said before and everything he's saying after is, he's telling you it because he wants you to live up to those expectations to be holy. Right? So he said, I am holy, so you should be holy. Keep going. You shall fear every man his mother and his father and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord, your God. And that is holy. Right? We tell people all the time, fear your mom your pops. My wife always tells me when she was growing up, uh, her mom was always say, if you obey me, you live longer. But that's the truth, though. But we, we, don't, we don't take away from that. We will say, yeah, it's important to honor your mother and your father. And the Sabbath, we go all across the country, we go all across the world, in Africa, Canada, telling people to keep all the Sabbaths. So we know this is important, right? Keep going. Verse 4. Turn ye not unto idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. And we will harp Christmas horrible. Halloween horrible. When they know Israel, when they hear that we Israel, they know that, okay, you don't do, hollow, you don't do the holidays anymore. At first, they thought we were Jehovah Witnesses, but no, nah, we're starting to make a name for ourselves. No, nah, we do what the Bible say, all of it. So now we got that. Let's skip over to verse 15. Go ahead, bro. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. So do we harp on this? From verse 1 all the way to verse 4, we're all like, okay, cool. Yeah, that's right. We could continue reading, but for the sake of time, I'm not. 
So I jumped straight to verse 15, which is in the same chapter, and it's saying, you shall do no unrighteous in judgment. So what is righteous judgment? That's according to the Bible. The Bible says we, all of our, we are filthy rags. We're not righteous at all, right? So in order to be righteous and or to be holy, we have to do what the Lord said because he is holy. He said, you shall do no unrighteous judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. When you start tail-bearing, when, when, when rumors start going on, you don't even know if it's true or false. You have no idea what's going on, and then you go about and continue to spread it. Are you doing unrighteous judgment? Because in, in what, whatever it is you're saying, is it contrary to the Bible or is it with the Bible? Oh, somebody doing X, Y, and Z. Well, can we read that in the Bible? If so, what's the problem? Right? So it said, you said, you know, unrighteous in judgment. Verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Uh -huh. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. So this is something I had to learn. Elijah had to sit me down, and he's constantly, still to this day, still talking to me about this. I'm going to learn. But it said, thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. A talebearer is not just someone who tells somebody else's business. If you tell your own business, you're a talebearer. It don't give you no specificity on uh, what a talebearer is. We're going to read the definition of what it is. But it just said, don't go up and down to, uh, as a talebearer. Don't be all on Facebook telling everybody I'm going through all this. Hey, no, there's someone you need to talk to about that. And that's it. We all don't need to know your business. Right? Verse 17. Oh, hold on. And it says, um, don't stand against the blood of thy neighbor. Another word for this blood is life. So don't stand against the life of, of thy neighbor. You know, with, uh, in, in a mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter is established. Right? So if you're lying against somebody, back in the day, they used to stone you. Rock a bar, baby. Easy, right? So then it says, don't stand against the blood of that neighbor. Or don't stand against the life of that neighbor. There's no need to run around with bearing false witness or this happened and this happened. If you have no proof on it, hush your mouth. I wish we still live by this today because a lot of individuals lying in the court of law saying such and such raped this person and this happened and this, they probably wouldn't be saying that if they knew that their life is online. Nowadays, it's like, oh, okay, keep going. But no, that's not how it was back then. Verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So that's how a lot of tail bearing, a lot of murmurings, it all starts from jealousy. Eventually, right, or misunderstanding, either or. But then you walk around having this spite in your heart against somebody, and then all of a sudden you start, hey, man, did you see what that boy did the other day? For what reason? If you have a problem with him, go to him and talk to him. That's what it says. It says, um, it says, thou shalt in any wise rebuke that neighbor. There's nothing wrong with going to that person and be like, hey, bro, did this happen? Yes or no? And let's read about it. Let's talk about it. Because that's how you're supposed to do. That's how in any, what the Bible say? If you have a problem, talk to that person face to face. Then after that, bring somebody else involved and then bring it to church. So there's nothing wrong with rebuking that neighbor, you don't even know what happened. You're already basing judgment or an opinion on something that you have no idea what happened yet. And it says, thou shalt not suffer sin upon him. Well, in other words, you should not sin because of him. You should not be talking about you having that hate in your heart and not confronting it one way or another. just going to uh, cause you to start back backbiting. It's going to start causing you to talk about somebody and we should not be. We are family. We are all we have. We are all we have. Verse 18, keep going. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any, any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. And that's the, uh, what, what's the first greatest commandment? Love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, your might. And the second one is loving thyself as, I mean, love thy neighbor as thyself. So that's how important this loving, that, that's not in the New, it's not just in the New Testament. This has been around for a minute. It's funny when they, uh, these are only two laws we have to read, and I go back and read them this. It's, that's not new. You're not saying anything new, but it's predicated on the commandments. So that's how you love thy neighbor as thyself. So this is what a righteous, a, pers a righteous person is supposed to do. Now let's go look at an unrighteous person. Let's see how he conduct himself, and then we can take a look in the mirror to see if we fit these qualifications. Because that's what it's all about. Take heed to thyself. Examine yourself. Yeah, we all here to help each other out, but at the end of the day, you can only save yourself. So you have to sit here and look yourself in the mirror. If you get judged, Lord willing, 
we don't see judgment. Hopefully we see judgment now, because if we see judgment, it'll probably be too late. But if we see judgment, we should have to be able to understand what we, yeah, man, I knew I did all that stuff. Hey, man, I already, man, throw me, throw me in the pool, bro. Ain't nothing else for me to do, right? And we have to start that judgment now. Psalms 50 and verse 16. Go ahead, bros. But unto the wicked God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? So he's talking to the wicked. He's like, man, what, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? When are you going to start paying attention and doing what I'm saying? When are you going to start? Verse 17. Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. Uh -huh. When thou sawest a thief... Then thou consendest with him and hast been partaker with adulterers. Is that righteous judgment? Not at all. It doesn't matter who you steal from. I don't care if you steal from the rich, give to the poor, or you steal them back what's, word, what's yours. A thief is a thief. When thou seest a thief, then consentest with him and hast been partaker with the adulterers. Don't, don't deal with adulterers, man. Don't deal with any of that stuff. You're supposed to separate yourself. Keep going. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. You're giving your mouth to evil. You're talking about somebody. You're talking about things you have no business to talk about. Even if you're playing around, we're going to read in the Bible, you shouldn't even be jesting. You have people going out and about uh, uh, acting like they're homosexual, saying things they shouldn't be. Oh, no, I'm just playing, bro. No homo. Hey, man, ain't none of that. Just stop it in general. I don't see why you're even playing with it. Keep going. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Slandering is lying about somebody's, uh, um, uh, uh, who they are. You, you, you lying, I can't think of a word right now, but you making a statement, and if you lying against somebody, and you are assassinating the character, right? That's how you slander somebody. You can't even sue in this United States of America because of this, right? And it said, thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, it's not literal your brother from your mom, but nevertheless, when we in the word, we all in the word, we all relatives. We all brothers, we all sisters, right? So if thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, the Lord don't like this. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou, thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. These things hast thou done, I kept in silence. They think that just because the Lord isn't coming down or passing judgment on them right now, they okay. Right? You're not getting away. You're just getting by. He wants you to repent. He, he's sitting down and hoping that you change his ways. That's what we can read in 2 Peter, right? He's waiting for that. These things hast thou, these things hast thou, thou done, and I kept silence. And you thought, because I'm quiet... I'm with you, but he's not with you. He's not with you at all. Keep going, but I will. Now consider this. No, 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 oh, but I will. But I will reprove thee uh -huh. and set them in order before thine eyes. But I will reprove thee. I will correct thee and set them in order in front of your eyes. I'm going to make this right. So it's up to you to make it right on yourself while you have that chance. Because once I come back, it's too late. And this is all about your mouth. This is, has nothing to do with adultery, has nothing to do with fornication, has nothing to do with eating the unclean. This is just your mouth in general. We don't sit here and think about how much our mouth can get us in trouble. 22. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in, piece, so in pieces. So he said, consider this, ye that forget God. So you have some type of recollection of God before. So he's not talking about the world. He's talking about the individuals in the church here. Because you forget God. You forgot who he was. So you knew at one point, but now you don't because of your mouth. And then he said, now consider this before or less I tear you in pieces. That's not nothing nice. This is a scary thing. You have an almighty being saying he would wreak havoc on you. Ain't nothing you can do about that. And there be none to deliver you. Verse 23. Whoso offer the praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordered his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. He that ordered his conversation aright, will I show the, uh, the salvation of God. Not no one else. So we have to be able to see and look, wake up and look in the morning, wake up and look ourselves in the mirror in the morning, every morning and say, look, I'm not going to talk to somebody. I'm not going to talk about nobody today. I'm not. And if I did, Lord, please forgive me. It's a walk. 
is a struggle. It's a fight. It's not going to be easy. Sometimes you could just be just chopping it up with somebody and you slip up and you slandering somebody's name. It happens, right? But nevertheless, it shouldn't be intentional. And if so, rebuke the devil and keep it moving forward. Because that's all it is, the devil, right? That's all it is. He's trying to find some way to assassinate our character. We can read in Revelation that he sit here and he plays blame on, each other, on us all day, all night. That's what he did to Job. He's he the accuser, exactly. That's, that's the same thing he did to Job. But we're going to keep moving. We're going to go to Ephesians 5. So all it is is Satan. We see Satan come through the mouth of Job's wife. And he just don't work through women. People, I don't know why. He worked through men as well. Look what happened to Judas. Ephesians 5. In verse 1, and, and not by any means am I up here talking as if I got it down, because I don't. Like I said, it's been, it's been a fight, but nevertheless, look, I'm in Vegas. There's no reason why I sit here, stuff going on in L.A., stuff going on in Gary, out in Vegas. There's no reason why anybody out there should hear stuff going on out here, Now, I mean, in Vegas. Now, the teachers is a little bit different. We talk, we, we communicate with each other, letting each other know what's going on, so, hey, Look, bro, this is what's happening. So if you come out here in Vegas and something pop off, you know why. That's a whole different thing rather than somebody just slandering somebody's name for no reason. Ephesians 5 and verse 1. Go ahead, bro. Be, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, uh -huh. and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Keep going. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become the saints. Uh -huh. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. So what we see here is that Paul lumped up together fornication, uncleanness, covetousness. Well, we all read that in Ten Commandments, in a sense. Well, except for uncleanness, but we all know that's unclean as well, right? So we that's... He, he, he lumped that stuff together with filthiness or foolish talking or jesting. Jesting is another word me playing around. Saying something just for jokes. No, that's a problem. We're going to read how that's a problem. It says, I think it's in Proverbs, that's like a madman running around shooting arrows. That's what it says. Somebody talking around, playing, and just say, hey, man, it's just for sport. I'm just playing around. That's not a way to, that's not how we conduct business. Everything that we say should be edifying the church or edifying the world, right? But fornication, physical or spiritual, or, or spiritual, and all uncleanness, eating pork, that's unclean, right? All uncleanness. It don't say this is okay. Every single one of them. Now, of course, you know, the uncleanness of a woman or whatever, that's a whole different topic. But we talk about uncleanness that we can stay away from. We can abstain, right? Covetedness was lusting on regarding lusting on somebody's wife or lusting on this car, lusting on these shoes, whatever the case may be, you putting that before God, letting it not be once to name you as becoming saints. So before you was in the world, you was doing all this. Now you became saints. Don't do this anymore. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient. So now we're going to keep it going. We're going to go to James. So we, we see and we hear that it's a big difference from the world and how individuals in the church should be acting. But we can't see that. It's sad to say, but some of us, we can say, if you bring us in a room with the Sunday Christians, you cannot tell the difference. Well, you might, because one of us is going to be like, oh, I'm a Hebrew, and I'm this. <laughs> what? Okay, whatever, show me. Right? Show me. James 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. I said 3, but let's go pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater con condemnation. Uh-huh. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. That's crazy. He said, if you don't offend, you are a perfect man. 
So it shows you the power of our mouth. And not to mention, if you don't offend, you can be a perfect man, right? The Bible says, uh, I believe it was in Job, it said, is it not, is it not, uh, is it, do like, do Christ like, I'm paraphrasing, do Christ like that you perfect or you make your way perfect? Right. So it's a chance we can be. Don't let no one tell you you can't be perfect. You can't be perfect. Job was perfect. Abraham was as perfect. And he told you to be perfect. But one of the ways to stop that is to correct your mouth. And then he said, if you correct your mouth, you can correct your whole body. It's starting with your mouth. You have problem with fornication. You have problem with jesting around too much. Pay attention to your mouth and watch how much all the other stuff fall off. Right? It starts off with your mouth. How did Eve sin in the garden? It started off with her mouth. Then everything else came through. Right? Verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. So we have a horse that's way bigger, stronger, faster than us, and we control this being by putting a bit in his mouth. That's some power right there. Putting something that's way bigger and stronger than you Controlling that by just controlling his mouth? That's a big deal to, to even think about. I have, I, I control everything that you have. I have dominion over everything because I can control his mouth. Or spe a specifically a horse. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. And what else? Behold, also the ships. Which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, mm -hmm. yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. And I like this here. I like, I like verse 4. Because it says, Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds. So the winds are what actually controlling, or not controlling, manipulating the, uh, the ships. But yet we can control it. By just a little him. So that to show you that even if there's outside problems that's going on, there's outside uh, situations, you can still control it by your mouth. That's simple. It said, what, a soft answer, turn away wrath? Yeah. Just by controlling your mouth, a lot of your problems will go away. Man, I wish I know this. I wish I can, like, it'd be so much easier for me because I'm a hothead. I ain't going to lie, man. People, I'm a, I'm a hothead. I, I, I love a drill. I'm a, you know, I like to jump out planes and do all crazy stuff. And, and somebody come up and say something to me, it takes a lot for me to turn around. You know, like I've, I'm a, a box as well. You know, I fight for fun, right? So, oh, what? You want to do? Okay, let's see. You know, let's see. Rather than me just turn around because I got a family at the house. Now, because of my mouth and my pride, you know, my daughter got to grow up without a dad now. Come on, man. It's not, it's not worth it. In verse 5. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Every time I read this, I think of like a forest fire. You know, you have somebody smoking a cigarette. That little fire, they throw it on the ground. All of a sudden, the whole forest is on fire. That's what he's saying. How, how little... How, how great of a matter a little fire kindleth. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on a fire of hell. That tongue is the, is, is, is the result of all this. Not nothing else, that tongue. Verse 7. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. Uh -huh. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. All right, so don't get it twisted. He did say, James did say, the tongue can no man uh, tame. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. He just letting you know the difficulty in doing it. He, the Lord wouldn't tell you to control your mouth if you are not able to do it. Right? He says, so the, the tongue can no man tame. We can go out and about and we can see people running rapid with their mouth. So uh, apparently it's a problem doing it, it's a, it's, a, it's a fight to do it, and it's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Verse 9. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Uh -huh. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Keep going. 
Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh? That's not, you can't, you can't yield both fountains. You can't, you can't do that. You can't sit here and cut somebody out and try to go kiss somebody else. You can't talk mess and try to teach the Bible. What? You know? Like, there's individuals who live. Like, I had this one dude. He's a uh, Jehovah Witness. He's a homie. I'm trying to convert him. Man, I don't talk to him too much because I can't deal with it. But he told me that the reason why he became a Jehovah Witness is because they talk to you all nice. They don't be up and screaming and yelling. They have suits and they conduct themselves in the, biz- in the, in the business matter. That's why he done it. It's not because of what they're teaching. It's because how they present themselves. Can you imagine we can change somebody's whole life around just by how we present ourselves? All because of that. Let's keep going. Let's go to Romans 1. Praise God. I'm just sharing what I taught. I was sharing what I was taught. That's all. Romans 1. Romans 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 28. Romans 1. So we're we're jumping into what Paul is talking about. uh, It's talking about an individual or individuals who believed in God at one point, but then after a while, they went astray. Okay, so we are talking about individuals that are in the truth as we like to say. So I'm harping on us that's in the truth because we are held in a higher standard than everybody else. If we don't do what we're supposed to do, the Lord has to try to make a miracle for that individual to hear the truth when you were supposed to do it. Romans 1 and 28, go ahead. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, Uh God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. A reprobate mind is a, you you don't want to have that mind. That's what Saul had. Once you have that mind, you're gone. You know, until you have that mind, there's still a shot. You alive and you don't have that mind, you can still be saved, right? Eventually be saved. We're not saved now, right? It takes time, eventually. Keep going. Being filled with all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. Fornication, Mm -hmm. wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity. Keep going. Whispers. Whispers. Keep going. Backbiters. Backbiters. Haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. And uh, I keep on going through these scriptures that is similar. You know, that's how I like to do my lessons. I try to hit certain topics and say the same thing, because me personally, for me to understand something, I have to look at that same picture in so many different angles. And what I'm trying to show here is that your mouth, you talking wrong or you doing things you're not supposed to do, is just as big as not keeping the Sabbath. We have to remember that. That's a big deal. Can you imagine you being seen by God and he was like, hey, man, you almost made it, but you cussed a little bit too much. It's like, really? Keep going. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable. Meaning you unforgiving. You don't forgive anybody. You got to be, you got to forgive so other people can forgive you. Right? 70 times 7? That's how many times? Look, me and my wife, man, look, some people know, some people don't. Sometimes we butt heads. It is what it is, but. I never gave up. She never gave up. And we still here. That's how that works. Forgiveness works. And to be honest, I'm doing it because, Lord willing, the Lord forgive me because I'm not perfect at all. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we go. 32. Let's read it. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So you doing these things, you are worthy of death. Let that sink in. You just talking, playing around, talking to the homies on the block. You know better. You are worthy of death. Man, I might as well not even go over there. You know, hey, man, text me so I can at least think before I reply. You know what I'm saying? 
Let's go to uh, Proverbs. Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. We're going to pick it up by verse 9. Proverbs 11, verse 9. Go ahead, bro. A hypocrite, a hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, uh -huh. but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. So a hypocrite, why is he calling him a hypocrite? Because the same way you judging this individual or the same way you slandering that individual, you probably did the same thing one way or another. So now you think you better than everybody because you keep the Sabbath? Bro, come on. Come on, bro. Saul kept the Sabbath. Judas kept the Sabbath. I bet you. Right? A, a hypocrite with his mouth destroy his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. So when I read the second part of it, I always think of David. When Shimei was cussing out David and making him feel bad, and the homie was like, hey, let me cut off his head. And he was like, nah, hopefully the Lord see this and have mercy on for me. That's that knowledge we have to have. Even if somebody coming across you sideways, they saying things against you, you don't, if you're going to confront them, confront them in the way the Bible tells you. You don't have to come with the guns blazing because that's not through knowledge you handle in that situation. You got to handle every situation with knowledge. David was wise in everything he do. And the Lord counted, he said, he's a man after my own heart. So that's how we have to walk. And he's a, he, he going to be the king. He made it. I wish I can read that. That Rashad made it through here. I'm telling you. <laughs> Verse 13. Keep going. A talebearer revealeth secrets. So that's what a talebearer is. For those who don't know, it's reveal. He they they reveal secrets. And once again, like I told you, it has no bearing on whose secrets you reveal, or how you revealed it. I only said a little bit, bro. If you revealed it, you known as a talebearer. Even if you talk about yourself, I can read in Ephesians, I should have put it up in here. I believe it's Ephesians 5. It says, it is a shame for them to speak things that they've done in the dark. Why are you talking about that stuff? Why? Matter of fact, this is mine as well, man. Let's go to Ephesians. I'm a, this is not in the book, I mean, in the lesson, but I want to read it. Let's go to uh, Ephesians 5. In verse 11, we're going to read two verses, 11 and 12. Ephesians 5 and verse 11. Go ahead. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So you ain't supposed to be dealing with the, uh, uh, the uh, um, people that's committing adulterers, people that doing things. And they know it's different because Jesus Christ came to the sinners, right? That's what he came. It's different if you're trying to tell somebody, hey, man, you know, you shouldn't be doing this and... All right, whatever. Okay, whatever. But you talk about someone who's in the church and know what they're supposed to be doing, and they still doing it? Yeah, bro. Let them slide, man. Don't hang. You're going to mess around and get the Lord going to throw lightning on them one time, and you're standing too close by them. Oops. Verse 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. That's what I was saying. It's a shame to even talk about that stuff. Now, it's different if, look, hey, man, Fontaine, I did X, Y, and Z. Bruh. All right, man, look, do what you do, this and this and this. You know you messed up here. Okay, let's find ways to fix this rather than me running around and telling everybody, hey, man, because, man, look, bruh, I messed up. Now, I don't know if you bragging or what. It's a shame to even talk about that stuff. Now, let's go back to the lesson. Let's go to Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26 and verse 16. We get there, Slim, go ahead. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. Uh -huh. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. You see that? He that passeth by and meddleth with strife. He just coming by just to cause up trouble. Don't stand next to him. Don't deal with him. Rebuke him and let it be. Eventually, the church is going to rebuke him. 
Don't, don't deal with that, man. It's, there, there's no need to, because like I said, your name going to get thrown involved in the mix, and then now, you know, friendly fire. You getting hit just because you know the dude. Right? Keep going on verse 17. No, uh, 18. As a madman who, <clears throat> as a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, am not I in sport? That's what I mentioned earlier. As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, someone who's running around who's crazy shooting arrows, I like to liken this as we have a school shooter walking around with an AK-47, a madman, letting it go, right? It says, as a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man, or it is the same man, or it is like that man that deceives his neighbor and saith, am I not sport? I'm just playing. Am I not playing around? It's the same thing as someone out here shooting up people. And we see that day to day, and we sit here and say, oh, man, that's a problem, man. Oh, man, he shot how many kids? It's the, it's the end times. It's the end times. But yet somebody doing that in the church and just kind of like, oh, man, he's just playing, man. Man, you a fool, bro. Ten, domino. Come on, man. We got to stop that. We got we to knock that out. We're not, supposed to even, we're not even supposed to be meddling with this person. Twenty. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tailbearer, the strife ceaseth. <laughs> so in fire, there's four things to have a fire going, right? You need oxygen, you need fuel, you need some type of chemical uh, um, um, combustion, right? Oxygen, fuel, chemical combustion, and heat. Those are things that make flame. That's how you make the flame. And to put it out, you have to remove something, one of them. If you move one of them, then it's smoldering. You, move, you, you remove both of them, then it's completely out. Right? And he said, soon as you remove the tailbearer, the strife is gone. So that is the reason why the fire is set, because this one individual, all the funk and all the beef you have in your church because of one individual, why would you keep the fire going? Remove it. Take it out. Keep going. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. So you have coals. Coals can be used for a number of things, but for the most part, you're trying to set it on fire. You're trying to cook for something. Same thing with wood. You can use wood to build houses or anything, but back in the day, man, it's cold. Let's burn that up. Put something on it. Let's eat, right? He says, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Somebody who have hate in their heart, somebody's mad about something, eventually they're going to cause problems. Nip it in the bud while you have that chance. Hey, man, well, look, why don't you go talk to that individual? Do you need me to go with you? Maybe you can't handle your anger yet. I can be there with you to help, you know, help convey the message or whatever. Don't sit around, walk around, and walk around with it because that's only going to lead to problems. And we don't need that in the church. Like I said, we wake up in the morning. We go out in the world. 90% of us work in the world. We deal with problems as it is. You know, people trying to, uh, um, they, they, they mimicking you, they trying to uh, isolate you because what you believe in, they throwing Christmas in your face. You're dealing with problems every day. When we come here, it's supposed to be peaceful. we also supposed to be brothers, so we shouldn't be dealing with that. Verse 20, 22. 22. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. So much with stick and stones may break my bones. So much for that. If we can read that words hurt, let's not um, try to be more manly or try to belittle the fact that words hurt. Ain't nothing wrong to say, hey, man, I know you was playing, but I really didn't appreciate how you was talking about how old boy got shot the other day. Ain't nothing wrong to talk about it. That's from the Bible. That's how we're supposed to get rid of our problems by talking about it. It's not just going to go away. It's like PTSD. It's not going to go away. You have to attack it from the, from the head. Right? So words have problems. 23. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a pot shirt covered with silver dross. So a pot shirt is just like an old pot, right? Just an old pot. He said burning lips and a wicked heart is like an old pot with silver dross, meaning you, you, you uh, sprinkle it with all silver and you dabble it up where it looks clean. It's, it's still an old dirty pot. You just made it shiny. That's all it is. So he, he, he's comparing the two, right? 
He said, that's how it is from an individual with burning lips and a wicked heart, but it keeps going. Verse 24. He that hateth dissembleth his lips with his lips and layeth up deceit within keep, him. Keep going. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. So just because you got this old dirty pot and you cleaned it up where it's all shiny and nice, and he starts speaking fair, if he still has some hate in his heart, don't believe anything that he's saying. That's what we just read. It says, when he speaketh fair, believe him not. Don't even believe it. People like to just cover things up. Hey, man, it's like I said before, we can't be too high and mighty and strong not to attack our problem. We as an African, or I say it just for political, African-American, Israel, Hebrew, black, whatever the case you want to call yourself, Negro, we, are, we grew up trying to be hard and tough everywhere, everything we do, we had to. And that's one of our problems. Somebody say something, we have to act tough. Hey, there's nothing wrong to be like, hey, bro, look, look, I'm sorry, man. We, we, have, to, we have to hide that. I'm, like I said, I'm a hothead. So I'm telling you guys this. This is something I've been working on since I've been in the Word. I got better. I don't just take off on people. I got better. I ain't going to lie. You know, there's still work to be done, though. I know I don't want to die tomorrow, I'll tell you that much. Because I'm like, man, I don't know if I made it, man. I don't know. All right, but we, it says, uh, for, there, for there are seven abominations in his heart. What are these seven abominations? Well, let's go look at it. Proverbs 6. We don't have to go so hard. Of, the Bible tells itself. The Bible tells itself. People try to interpret the Bible. There's no need to. The Bible says God's wisdom is higher than yours. You can't interpret. You can't tell what that man's saying. He have to tell you. So let's, talk, let's, let's see what these seven abominations that are in an individual's heart who's acting like this. What are they? Proverbs 6, verse 16. Go ahead. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Uh -huh. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. This is that individual that had these things that's trying to hide, and there's a problem with him. A proud look. Usually when you talk down about somebody, or you backbite at somebody, it's because you're trying to make yourself feel like you something. Usually. It's a, it's a, it's a hidden line in everything you do. There's always something. That's what I learned. Just let someone talk. Eventually they put their foot in their mouth. Also, that's the problem. Oh, you're mad because you mad because I say I'm Israel. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, man. It is what it is, bro. What you want to say? What can I say, right? A lying tongue. Usually they're going to lie behind it. You know, Israel, every time we try to make a story, we always try to make things a little bit bigger, make it a little more exciting, you know? Hey, man, that car came, it blew up. I did a backflip over it, and I landed in the water. But you can't swim. What you mean you landed in the water? I don't get it. We always try to make something out of it. A hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imag imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. You know what you're supposed to do, but as soon as something happens, you're ready to go and do what you're not supposed to. You have a little bit of friction. Oh, man I'm, man, I'm about to go back and continue smoking what I be smoking. Come on, bro. Not saying smoking is bad, but if you smoke crack, you're going to die. Let's hey, I'm, I'm, make it plain, right? It is what it is. A, fa a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth, soweth discord among brethren. The Lord hate the fact that Satan, we give Satan the power to separate us as a family. He don't like that. So why would we give him power to do that? Let's keep it going. Now let's go to uh, Proverbs, no, 2 Corinthians 12. Second Corinthians 12. So you have to watch these individuals who come and talk to you, spreading rumors. There's something behind it. He's trying to get you caught up in the mix of it. So now we're going to uh, move forward. We are going to pinpoint or prove that this stuff has been going on forever in the church. Yeah, we talk, we starting off with Paul and the, and the Gentiles, but we're going to go back to Israel as well. It started with us. We taught the wicked ones their ways. That's what it says, right? 
2 Corinthians verse 12, I mean, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 20. You got it, bro. For I fear, lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I, shall, and that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not. I'm telling you, man, they were G's back in the day, too. He said, for I fear, he, he's dealing with the Corinthians, all right? He said, for I fear, when I come, I shall not find you such as, as I would. I fear that when I come, you won't be acting the way you're supposed to. You won't be doing the things that I think you should be doing. And then he said, and that I, should, I shall be found unto you such as you would not. Because if I see that, I'm going to act up. That's pretty much what he's saying, man. I'm, I'm fearful that I'm going to come here and see you guys not doing what y'all supposed to do. Then all of a sudden, I'm going to snap. Because you know what you're supposed to be doing. Right? Then keep going. Lest there, lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, stripes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults. So he's dealing with the church, and he's telling them, these are the things that I do not want to see you be dealing with when I come here. Because he's writing a letter to the Corinthians. Like, I just drove like 300 miles here. Everybody can't, back in the day, they can't do that. You know, you got people flying all across the world preaching the word of God. Then they have to write letters. So he heard that the Corinthians were doing their thing. He was like, okay, cool. Soon I come around there, hopefully you guys still be doing what you're supposed to do. And if not, you will see me the way you don't want to see me. Don't forget, Paul was a G. He used to walk around killing people for saying Jesus. So you know he's, he's really with it, right? Lest there be debate. He don't want that. Envyings. What are you envying somebody for? What? Oh, man, you teach every day, man. I want to... Man, you are, you did, man, do you know who you are? Like, you're really getting mad about it. Look, you can have it, bro. It's stress anyways, right? <laughs> Debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbiting, whisperings, swelling to, man, keep it going, man. We're going to go to uh, First Timothy. So we're going to look in another place to see it was dealing with the church. And at first, we were dealing with a lot of the men. But now let's look at the women as well. 1 Timothy 5. We, we, are, we are about to jump in with the provision of, wi of, of the widows. You know, if an individual is a widow at a certain age, the church should look out for them if they meet certain requirements. But then he told you the younger women don't. And there's a, we a reason why he said don't, right? Verse 13, go ahead. And with all, they learn to be idle. So, and with all, anyways, they learn to be idle. I mean, they're not working, they're not doing, they're not using their hands uh, uh, to some type of project, if it's controlling the house, if it's whatever the woman wants to do, right? They, they, they are idle, and what? Wandering about from house to house. Wandering about from house to house. Dealing with everybody, your house is dirty and you in everybody else's house, bro. Come on now. Run by house to house and what? And not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. And not only are they not doing anything, they're also tattlers, gossipers. Hey, man, did you see what Rashad said the other day? I can't believe you're a teacher. I'm going to call Elijah. I don't, I don't know, man. Busybodies, busybodies. Speaking things which they are not. Why are you talking about, bro? We already established certain things to not come out your mouth. And now you're in somebody else's business. You don't know the situation. You don't know what's going on, but you're going to put your comment in it. For what? What, what is that going to help now? Okay, now we know what you're going to say. Can we handle the business? Right? Speaking things they are not. Verse 14. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, Guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Uh huh. For some are already turned aside after Satan. You see that? He said, And I will therefore that the younger women bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Once you start talking and dealing with things like that, you open the floodgates for Satan to come in and cause some type of havoc, one way or another. For some, are already turned aside after Satan. So he's making this statement saying, we already, this is already going on. This is already happening. So I'll, let's nip it in the bud and 
We don't do this anymore. Those individuals, we're going to let them be. Lord willing, they get understanding. They stop. But let's not have any more. Right? First, first, uh, Second Thessalonians 3. Second Thessalonians 3 and verse 6. still around in papers. Go ahead, bro. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. All right, so everybody that's walking not the way they're supposed to, get rid of them, right? Verse 7. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. You know how you should be conducting yourself, right? So you shouldn't be want to hang out with someone who is not conducting themselves in that manner because you're just going to fall in the pit, right? Two men that don't agree can't walk together. That's what the books say. They know it because either one of us is going to fall to another. And look, I'm not trying to gamble with my chances, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave, and when you have the chance, come see me because I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, right? Keep going. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Verse 11. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. So we hear, once again, I'm painting the picture, this has already happened. So there's no coincidence that's happening to us, because it's been happening. But we have the power to stop it by looking through all of these scriptures and seeing what happened to them, seeing that the Lord warned them, and while we're still alive, we still have that chance to stop it. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. And how they working? I mean, how they walking? Working not at all. So they idle, like we read in Timothy. But are busybodies. But are busybodies. So you, you're not working. You're not handling in your business. You're not taking heed to thyself. But you want to be in my business. How that work? You're not paying none of my bills. At least, at least pay a bill, bro. And then we can talk about what I did yesterday. Verse 12. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work <laughs> and eat their own bread. Man, be quiet and work and eat your own bread, man. Pay attention to your own stuff. What the? I'm going to start saying that. Hey, bro, eat your own bread, bro. I like that. I'm going to start saying that. I'm going to make that tight watch. Hashtag eat your own bread. Now with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Keep going. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Uh -huh. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Keep going. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So when you do cast him out, when you do, you know, put his business all on front street by what he's doing, don't, he's not, a, he's not your enemy, you know? Still, if he's willing to try to change, the Bible says 70 times 7. You know, just be smart with it. Don't, 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 don't share secrets with them. I don't know. You know, don't let them come to your house. But nevertheless, he's not your enemy. We only got one enemy, and that's Satan. None of, like, we all in this fight against him. So uh, now let's go to, let's go to Numbers. We're going to, now we're going to take a look at Israel. Let's go back to Numbers. And we're going to see how they conduct themselves. We took a look at the Gentiles, and all this stuff was already happening with them. So Israel, we we, we got to do better. We got to be better. The Lord chose us. We kings. Come on, bro. <laughs> Numbers twelve. Number twelve and verse one. Go ahead. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of. The <clears throat> because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And it don't, it don't surprise me, because we still do this to this day. Israel ain't supposed to marry outside their race. He married a Gentile. I can't believe it. Man, you, your mama should be ashamed of you. They was doing that back then. They mad at Moses because he married an Ethiopian woman. How crazy does that sound, bro? He helped you come out to uh, 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 Egypt. He did all the miracles. He's pleading with the Lord so he don't kill y'all. And then you get mad at him because you, oh, he's sleeping with her, man. That's, he'd be ashamed of himself. Don't make no sense. Israel don't make no sense. 
Verse 2. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? That's that pride. So after, he, after they talk and mess about him, you see the underlying issue. Come on, man. Why, 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 why Moses get to do everything and say everything? He, God talked to us too. We holy. Over here, camp banging. This is what I see. This is the, the beginning of the camp banging. <laughs> they trying to start their own clique. And they said, and they said have the Lord indeed sp- only spoken by Moses? Have he not spoken, us by, spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Verse 3. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Uh-huh. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. So every time people try to say that uh, Jesus or God the Father or whatever, um, God the Father and Jesus, and I always read to them that, hey, they never heard Jesus, uh, God's voice at all. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. Then I take them here. So who's that? Is that God spoke to them? Oh, man, that's a typo. <laughs> All right, so it says, And the Lord spake selling unto God. I digress. And the Lord spake selling unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. So the Lord actually talking to them. Verse 5. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. Uh-huh. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make the, myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Uh-huh. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall, be, <clears throat> shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? I wish the Lord can come down and partake into our uh, nonsense as he did here. Soon they said something, he came down. I was like, really? I talked to this dude face to face. He sees my similitude. I ain't trying to hit him with no parable. I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking to you guys in dreams. And you think that you somebody? Keep going. Verse 9. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow, and Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. So he didn't like it, and it says Miriam would turn right to leprous. Why did Aaron turn? I don't know. Maybe Miriam was starting to Miriam, I don't know. All I, all I know is that both of them was talking against Moses, but Miriam got the uh, punishment, right? She got got, right? That's all I can say. And Aaron said unto Moses, of verse 11. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee. Lay not the sin upon us. So after they were talking mess, now they're going to most, hey, come on, man, my bad, man. Come on, man, please. Don't, please don't lay this on us. Keep going. Wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. This reminds me of that Kevin Hart thing. Like every time Kevin Hart tried to talk mess and do stand up, he'd be like, give me a hug. Yeah. That's pretty much what just happened here. Oh, man, I'm sorry, man. We cool, right? Please don't let this happen to me. Verse 12. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, When he cometh out of his mother's womb. And this is what gets me. Verse 13. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. We have to have strength like this. They were just just bad-mouthing Moses. Then he turned around and prayed for him. We have to have that strength. And not only did he have that strength, he didn't come through and talk about them. He ain't do nothing sideways against them. He was just like, Lord, please don't do this. Heal her now. There was times when Moses was like, hey, man, if you want to kill them, kill me too. Bruh, I, I don't have the strength to say that. I'm going to be like, oh, so you going to do that to them? All right, wake me up when it's done because I ain't, no, nah, I ain't trying to see that. Verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, if her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? And there you go, uh, there you go Jesus once again, or God, however you want to say it. That's Jesus. We all know that's Jesus. Once again, he's sitting here saying, this how you know how he feel about the situation. He said, if a father spit in her face, that's extremely disrespectful. Somebody spitting in somebody's face, but that's how things happened back then. And he was sitting here saying, if that would occur, would not she be ashamed for seven days? So her talking mess to Moses was was equivalent or made him mad to the equivalent of him spitting in her face. Because it says what? Keep going. 
Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. Because she had to be shut out from the camp for seven days as if she really got spit in her face. All because she was talking mess about somebody. And for what reason? You're not going to gain anything out of that. You're not. Moses had a problem dealing with the whole church. People had to come to him and was like, hey, man, break it down. You know, put some order behind it, kind of like Elijah Lesson the other day. Put some order behind it so it would be easier for you. And yet, they want to walk around in those shoes. You have no idea what, in, what individuals are going through. But you want to talk about them behind their back to make yourself feel better, to set a point? It doesn't make no sense at all. Verse 15. Oh, go ahead, finish it then. And after that, let her be received in again. Uh -huh. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. Uh huh. So they didn't even go anywhere until Miriam came back. That's some love right there. If Moses said, let's move, they would have moved. But the Lord was like, no, nah, we all going to wait until all of our family come back. That's the type of love we all had to have for each other, man. You know, somebody fall off, hey, let's go get this man, and hopefully he come back. Now, if he refused to come back, that's one thing. But us turning our backs and talking mess about him, man, praise God the Lord don't have the same heart we have. Because we all would have been dead. I'd probably been the first one. Now let's go to number 16. So we checked that part out. Now we're going to go to number 16. We're going to look at this. Some more nonsense. Number 16 and verse 1. Go ahead. Now Korah, the son of Azar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and on, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. So these individuals, when it said take men, it means that they went to go gather a posse together to come at Moses. Don't, people be trying to make things, it doesn't make sense. Any which way, they went to go grab somebody, they, they went to go grab 250 men to come against Moses. And it'll tell you, verse 2. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. So they went to go grab men that was about something, I guess to prove a point. They grabbed 250 men that was about something, all the Reverend Jesse Jacksons and all of them. Grab all of them to go see Moses. Verse 3. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Same thing Miriam said, talking mess, murmuring, back him, uh, uh, murmuring about Moses. These individuals didn't learn, apparently. They, was, they, they, they must have asleep those seven days because they came and said the same thing and had the same problem as Miriam had, but yet there's an underlying issue. We're going to read what this issue was. Keep going. Verse 4. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, uh -huh. and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. Uh -huh. This do, take you censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. So this right here was a setup. <laughs> Moses set him up because only a, certain, only, uh, a only a certain amount of people were able to go do sacrifices to the Lord, to bring censors to the, censors to the Lord. Right? All the Levites couldn't do that. Some Levites, this, this, this individual was control of this. This individual was controlling of this. So he told them, okay, since you about something, go ahead, take some censers and bring it to the Lord then. If you, if you think you about it, okay, let's see. That's why he said, you take upon too much upon yourself, you son of Levi. Verse 8. And Moses said unto Korah, hear, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. Uh -huh. 
and he hath brought thee near to him and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood so these, also. So these individuals are in, the, are in the truth. They are some of the heads. They are Levi. And Moses telling them, do you take it a small thing what you have? You too busy worrying about what somebody else's have. You are belittling what you have. It doesn't make no sense how some teacher sitting here talking mess about somebody else. Oh, man, this teacher did this. Oh, man, I don't like how he left the congregation. Man, what does that matter, bro? The whole point is to spread the word of God. And you guys tripping just like how these guys are. The same exact thing. So you want the priesthood also? Really? You have all this other stuff you have, but you want what I got. Or what Aaron got. Verse 11. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. That's the reason why all you guys here. Keep going. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And who is Aaron that you talk mess about him? This is why I try to tell people all the time, you know, like some of the other brothers and sisters back in Vegas, they'd be like, oh, man, you know, you the, you the teacher, man. You the, man, I am nobody, man. The, the Lord put on Elijah's heart to have me stand up here. Don't think I'm somebody. Don't put me on that pedestal, bro. I ain't trying to get hit. You know, he said, who is, who is Aaron? You over here talking about Aaron like he's somebody. Aaron's nobody. None of Aaron made a bull a calf. He, he messed up like everybody else. Moses messed up. Moses didn't ever, did not be able to see the land because he messed up. So you guys kicking against me like I'm about some. The Lord's control of everything. That's what they're missing out. That's what they did not recall. Right? Did we go 14? Keep going. Verse 12. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? So this is the problem. Remember I said it was an underlying problem. This is the problem. Man, you brought us out of the land that flowed with milk and honey. This is how I view people, and this might be bad, but <laughs> this is how I view people who say I'm African-American. Bro, do you know you in slavery? You got pride in that too, huh? Like you bought somebody. That's what they just said. They said you flow us out the land that flowed with the milk and honey, talking about Egypt. You took us out of Egypt to be in the wilderness, and you going to make yourself a prince over us? Bro, do you not know God is, t- oh, man. I know he was just like, Lord. Lord have mercy. I, know, I wonder how Elijah feels sometimes when we be calling him. I know he'd be like, man, Moses, how you doing? Verse 14. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? So you're trying to make it seem like we don't see what you're doing, bro? You trying to put the, are you trying to put out the eyes of men? You trying to make it seem like we don't, we don't see what you're doing? You brought us out of here so you can control us and we're just going to die in the wilderness? That's, that's, that's their whole beef. That's their whole beef. So after everything was said and done, go, go ahead, finish it. and then We will it. not come up. Right, so they didn't want to come up. Now skip down to verse 31. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. So after all that stuff happened, Moses starts speaking the things that he speak. He said the things that he said, like, yo, I haven't done nothing to these individuals. If they die as regular men, the Lord ain't speaking by me. So, you know, he, he given his fill. So that's why I said, and it came to pass, as he had made an end of his speaking, that he is Moses, all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. Keep going. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah. And all their goods. So after they, after Moses said what he said, the Lord opened up the ground. They fell straight through it. Keep going. They and all that appertain to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. Every man, his wife and his kids had nothing to do with his pride, and now they're dead too. It's it's, it's a it's, it's a thought. Us men who are trying to be heads have to remember you out here doing things you're not supposed to. You come home giving your wife HIV or something all because you want to act up. It doesn't make sense. That's what happened to them. So everything that they had died, fell through the ground. And then what else happened? And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. 
For they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. Because they was messing up too. So they're like, oh man, let me get away from here. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be one of them. Oh, snaps. He real. Verse 35. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Because they wasn't supposed to be offering incense. That's not their job. But since you think you somebody, do it. And what happened? They all got done. And then the Lord told them, hey, grab these censers. I mean, grab these, uh, the ashes, make them little plates so everybody know what happened this day. That's what happened. And then we, now we're going to skip down to verse 40, 41. Go ahead. But on so, the, so after all this happened, after all this happened, what happened in verse 41? But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, Aaron saying, ye have killed the people of the Lord. Bruh, Moses and Aaron didn't do that. The Lord did it. So after all of that, they're going to sit here and still murmur and talk mess. They're not paying attention to their own stuff, bro. Man, you, you, man, that was a good man, man. That was Reverend Jesse Jackson, man. He can't believe you killed that, man. It's pretty much just like that. Verse 42. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation. And behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. It came down just like he came down with Miriam. Verse 43. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. Uh huh. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on the incense, and put on incense, and go quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. So soon that happened, a plague started. And Moses said, Aaron, go make atonement for these people. They were just talking bad about these guys. So on both ends, so on both ends, we see, on both ends, we see individuals talking mess upon, uh, upon a group of people that's trying to do what thus say the Lord. And we see how they are getting treated. Then on the other hand, we see how we are supposed to conduct ourselves when we are in the midst of all of that. We see it on both ends by this one story or two stories. So the plagues began, people start dying, and he told Aaron to go make atonement for these guys. Verse 47. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people, and he put on an incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. See how much faith that is? So a plague is coming. After you made the atonement, you ran and you stand in the middle of it? Bruh. That's bruh. That's like, man, bruh. That's some, that's some cold stuff right there. And it stopped right then and there. All because of that atonement. But they never stopped believing in Israel, though they was talking bad about them. Right? We can't stop believing amongst each other. Jesus Christ that came and died for everybody. Even individuals who talk mad about him, say he wasn't real. He still, so he gave that chance to everybody, just like how Moses and Aaron gave that chance to everybody. We being sinners and nothing, we, it should be no, it should, it, should, it should be easy for us to give that chance to everybody. Even if they start talking mess, look, I forgive you. It is what it is. Let's move forward. You still coming to church on Saturday? You need a ride? That's how the conversation, should, the, the conversation should be. Keep going. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700, besides them that died about the matter of Korah. So you got 14,700, no, 14,900 and about like 50-something, well, not counting the, the children they had. Because it says 14,700 died in the plague. On top of that, besides... What, who died a matter of Korah. So you put those individuals together, not mentioning the kids and stuff, you had about 15,000 people die just because of murmuring, just because of talking mess against people. It's not worth it. The Lord said he don't like it. He, he shows you how to handle yourself. If you have a problem with somebody, do it like there's no need to um, spread poison in the veins of the congregation when we have so many other stuff to fight about. It doesn't make sense. But that's it, huh? Yeah, we're going to keep it going. Verse 50. Okay, go, go ahead. Read that. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. All right, now let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. Go ahead. 
So now we're going to read, what's, what was the point of us reading that? What was the point of us reading the Corinthians? What was the point of us reading Numbers? So this is why. This is the point. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 9. Go ahead. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Uh -huh. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Uh -huh. Now all these things happen unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So that's why we read it. That's the point of all that. This is an example for us how we should conduct ourselves. There's no need to, like I said before, this is like the only family I have, really. There's no need for us to be sitting here talking about people. A lot of you guys I don't know by name. They probably got me on Facebook. I post random things every now and then, right? But nevertheless, somebody have a problem with something, somebody needs something, everybody in Vegas know, holler at me. And the same thing no matter where I'm at or what's going on. So with that being the case, us reading what I read, what we all read in Numbers and the Corinthians, there's no need for us to talk bad about each other. If that's what happened to them, it will happen to us. Right. And maybe not now because the Lord trying to show mercy upon us to have us change our, words, our ways. But the end is coming. And when it's coming and you stand in that judgment line, man, I shouldn't have said nothing about fun. Dang. That's exactly how that's going to work. And the Lord going to be like, yeah, you already know, bro. Go on and take him. Yeah, you already know. Now let's go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians, we're going to switch gears here. We're almost done. Ephesians 4 and verse 29. Go ahead. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, uh -huh. that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Keep going. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So that's one of the ways we can grieve the Holy Spirit by talking. So it's not just understanding the Bible and go away from it. Right? It's not just that. We can also grieve him by uh, profaning others with our mouth. He is vexing the Holy Spirit. That's what it just says. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of Redemption, keep going. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So this is how you know that's what he's speaking of. So ha after having that understanding, this is what we need to do. All right, put all that stuff away. Let's go to James 4. I want to mention it one more time before I switch gears. James 4, the boy can get there, and pick it up, one verse, once 11. One verse, verse 11. James 4, verse 11. Go ahead. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law uh -huh. and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. So that's what happened when we start speaking against one another, is that we are becoming a judge, the judge and juror of our own interpretation of how we feel, our own biasness. And none of that stuff is righteous. That stuff doesn't matter at all. So you made yourself judge and jury. You have no lake of fire to put no one in. You just talk and mess. But the Lord writing all that down. He got seven angels flying back and forth. Oh, yeah, he's still talking. Yep, he's still talking. All right. Well, I'm going to put him in like a fire den just because of what he's saying right here. And we're going to read that. Let's go to Galatians 6. So this is how we should conduct ourselves. Right here. Judges 6. I mean, Galatians 6. Man. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian. I was talking so much mess about you every time you mess up. Mm. Mm. I just playing. I love you. Galatians 6. 
Verse 1. Go ahead. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such in one in the spirit of meekness. So that's how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. We ain't supposed to be talking bad about somebody. Somebody mess up, go over there and revive him. Make him stronger. Yeah, look, man, you messed up. You know that's not right. Don't do it again. So you still have a chance. You're still alive. The Lord didn't turn you to a reprobate mind. You didn't say, forget it. I'm not coming to church no more. That means there's still something working in you that the Lord like. That's how we're supposed to conduct ourselves, not talking bad about each other. And then what it says? Considering thyself. Consider who? Thyself. Considering thyself. For what? Lest thou also be tempted. It's going to come back around. You know, I was just talking about Brian because he messed up and I messed up. See, it all comes back around. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> Brethren, if a man be overtaken in fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Tempted to fall off, tempted to doing something you ain't supposed to do, or even tempted by running out the mouth, and now you sin it. Verse 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Uh -huh. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. And that's true. Keep going. But let every man prove his own work. Every man prove his own work. Take heed to your own self. Prove yourself to the Lord. You, have, you can only save yourself. And you ain't going to really judge anybody from what we know right now, because we don't know if we're going to be, we, we don't know if we made it. We know that the saints will judge the world, but... We don't know if it's us. We still fighting this fight, right? But let every man prove his own work. So us reading it, that means that we still have stuff to do to prove ourselves to the Lord. And us talking bad about him or about somebody else is not going to help us make it to the end of the race as we want. But let every man prove his own work. Then what? And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Uh-huh. For every man shall bear his own burden. So every man shall bear his own burden, right? That's, that's all we can do is take care of the things that we had uh, done or the mistakes we made. It's our walk, right? That's the only thing we have. If somebody else messed up, if we can help that brother, praise God. You know, Lord willing, the Lord can see that and be like, okay, I might give you brownie points because of that. But that's the only thing we can do. Everything else, us trying to talk about somebody as if we on top and we on top and we got it all right, that's not gonna work because it's just said, for if a man think himself to be something when he is not, he's deceiving himself. So if we want to make it to the kingdom, we have to at least admit to ourselves that we sinners. Right. At least. Matthew seven. Matthew 7 and verse 1. That's what happened to David. As soon as uh, Nathan came to David and told him what he did wrong. Uh, I'm a sinner, bro. Uh, he, probably, he probably knew it all along. He just trying to, you know, stick his chest out and act like nothing happened. Because as soon as he came to him, he broke down. Yup, bro, you did. Yup, I know. I've been thinking about this all day. Dang. And the Lord was like, all right, he, 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 he's not going to kill you right now. So he admitted to himself, off top. It's something we have to do. He didn't start blaming nobody. Or well, he was—he was never home, bro. So, I mean, what? How that work? Man, Matthew seven, verse one. Go ahead. Judge not, that ye be not judged. Uh -huh. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Uh huh. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? That's why I titled it, Take Heed to Thyself. You're too busy worrying about everybody else. You're not even considering the problems that you have to get done. Right? He said, Judge not that ye, might not, that ye be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So everything that you're doing is going to come right back to you. And on top of that, why are you worrying about somebody else's problems when your problems are all messed up? 
Oh, man, he don't take care of his household. Man, he's worse than an infidel. Bro, you work every Sabbath. What are you talking about? What's the point? At least, at least he's not working on the Sabbath. Now what? Keep going. Verse 4. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Mm. Thou hypocrite. Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eye. Take care of your own self, and then you can see clearly. Now you might have some mercy. Oh, man, I remember. Yep, I was just like that the other day. Hey, man, look, I pray for you. I got some job applications. I can talk to somebody. You know, now you have some type of mercy involved because you see clearer. You know what's going on. You know that the Lord is weighing in one way or another. That's how that works. But yeah, you trying to talk about everybody else and your stuff ain't right. You a hypocrite. All, the, all, all in all. 1 Corinthians 11. After this, we got one more. First Corinthians 11 and verse 26. So we jumping straight, straight in the uh, Lord's Supper, what they call it, you know, the Passover. He jumping straight into that. And there's the problem in the midst. You have some people over here having a good time, drunk, eating. You have somebody else over here, they're all hungry. So they, they are weighing in on this matter. First Corinthians 11, verse 26. Go ahead. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Uh -huh. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. So he said, whoever drink it or eat, drink this cup or eat this bread unworthily shall be guilty. So that calls for some self-check. Am, am I unworthy of doing this? That's pretty much what he's setting up. He's setting up for you to check yourself. Verse 28. But let a man examine himself. Let every man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So you have to examine yourself before you even come to the Lord. Before you sit here and uh, try to come under the blood of Jesus Christ, every day you have to wake up. Man, am I doing something? What do I need to make better today? Have I perfected this? Nope. I'm going to keep on moving then. You have to examine yourself. When, you, when someone up here teaching, every Sabbath day someone teaching, I'll be in the back and I'll be thinking, man, he's talking about me. No, nah, he ain't talking about me. Could he be talking about me? Because I'm trying to every day examine myself. I know I'm not perfect. And maybe that's why I'm still alive because the Lord knows I'm being honest with myself. But nevertheless, that's what we all need to do. But let a man examine himself and so, him, and so let him uh, eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Verse 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Uh -huh. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, <laughs> and said, many sleep. Because of this, that is why everybody dying. And that's why everybody's sick. Because you, oh, I got mine. I ain't worrying about nobody else. And because of that, because of that reason, he says, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Can you imagine you having a good time partying and somebody step up and start putting you on blast like this? Man, this is the reason why your people over there did. Because how you acting right now. You don't want to show mercy to nobody. You want to be gluttonous. And you're not examining yourself. You think I got it right. Kind of like that publican and that sinner. He came in and was just like, man, thank God I ain't like him. Right. What? What type of, that doesn't make sense at all. Type of prayer. Keep going. Verse 32. No, 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Right. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. So for if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged, meaning the great white throne judgment. Because we all going to be judged. Lord willing, we being judged now. Right. right. That's why we're going through the things we're going. So sometimes you got to break these scriptures down because people will see, man, I ain't going to be judged because I'm judging myself. I'm right. Okay. Next question. No, that's not how that works. For if we judge ourselves, meaning we totally examining ourselves every walk of the way, Lord is expecting us to get it right because we are examining ourselves. And because of that, we won't be judged in the last day. And then he says, 
But when we are judged, meaning now, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Because the Bible says that if the Lord chastens you now, because he treats you like a son. I always whip my kids. I'll let you know now. I just whipped them earlier. And so that's why, and, and that's the type of love I want from the Lord. Like, look, Lord, if I don't deserve it, just give it to me a little bit, just so I know you still care. Because sometimes, man, I'll be thinking to myself, like, man, that check was pretty fat. Wait a minute. Did the Lord, is, hold on, let me go pray. I, I did something wrong. I know something happened. I don't, I don't trust it. Last verse, Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 9. When you get there, brother, go ahead. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Only take heed to thyself, unless you forget everything that you have seen and everything you have heard. Me and you can go to that reprobate mind. So take heed of ourself, tell bearer, and I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. Uh, Brian's supposed to have something to say. The announcements, you can probably read these announcements till he comes. Okay, go ahead and read the announcements, bro. We welcome you and hope today's lesson increased your knowledge of the Holy Bible. CDs and DVDs of the Sabbath lessons are available. Please place your order and donation in the offering envelope, and it will be filled on the next Sabbath. The children's class, ages 5 through 12, starts at the same time as the adult Sabbath lesson in the assigned location. Bring your child so that their knowledge may be increased. Train up a child in the way they should go, in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Adult question and answer is from 4.30 to 6.30 after the Sabbath lesson. We have question and answer every Wednesday at 5 p.m. via telephone conference line. The number and access code are located at the top of the lesson. Or see the live stream of question and answer at www.thykingdomcome7.com. If you are interested in being baptized, please place your name on the list at the literature table. Remember to follow the dress code when attending our services. Men should remove all hats and all head coverings during service times. Women should wear a head covering, such as a hat or scarf, during the service. Women should not wear tight-fitting pants or skirts or revealing clothing. Attire should be modest according to the Bible. If your child becomes restless during the Bible lesson, we encourage you to remove your child from the room until he or she has settled. Your tithes and offerings are always appreciated. Please place your tithes and offerings in an offering envelope and deposit in the offering box. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. Again, thank you for coming, and we hope to see you on the next Sabbath. Peace. Peace. So since he, till he come, I guess we're just going to... Okay, here he is, the police. Oh, okay. Okay, um, let's get a brother hand for a beautiful lesson. Praise the Lord. <laughs>